to our third and final public forum to review the new boundaries for Adult Oral High School, opening in the year 22-23. My name is Roger Sanchez. I'm the Director of Research and Planning for the Kern High School District. Uh, my role in this process was to guide the committee in creating the boundary plans displayed this evening. Tonight's forum, uh, tonight's forum is being recorded. Uh, and all the forums, uh, the comments are on our web page as well, so if you want to go back and, and look at or listen to the comments, you, you, can, you can do that. I'd also like to introduce Erin uh, Briscoe-Clark, tonight's moderator. Uh, she will explain how the public portion process will take place in a few minutes. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Principal Paul Hellman and his staff for allowing us to use their facility for tonight's forum. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide a brief overview of the boundary process and to give the public an opportunity to voice their opinions regarding the three plans that will be presented to the board on August 2nd. All comments will be provided to the board for their review. The board will review the plans and make a final decision at the September 7th board meeting. To allow ample time for community input, uh, we will not be answering questions this evening. So this process started back in December of 2020 where we presented the criteria to the school board. Um, and they approved it and we started the process. We were gonna start the process in, in March with the boundary committee, but due to COVID and the delay of being able to get folks inside of a room, uh, we ended up pushing the um, committee uh, meetings a month later and started in actually in April, which has actually pushed everything back. We would have had these forums done in May had we been able to start on time. Uh, the public forums, um, some of you have been to maybe all three of them, or this is your first one. We've had three of them so far, or this is the third one, um, over the last three weeks. Uh, as I mentioned, the board presentation will take place on all the plans on August 2nd, and then on September 7th, the board will make the, the final decision. So these boundaries um, were created uh, for, for the high school, for, for the new high school, Del Oro. Um, if we had not had Del Oro High School being built, uh, we would not have done um, uh, any kind of boundary changes at this time. So the, the reason we're even here is because of, the, uh, the, of Del Oro being built. Um, by, having, by saying that, uh, it's important to know that we, want, we, don't want, we don't like doing boundary changes um, because it does disrupt a lot of families. Um, so we wanted to create boundaries that would last the longest possible time uh, so that we don't have to do this again in a couple of years. For those of you who don't know, um, the new school is built on the corner of Panama Lane and Cottonwood Road and will open uh, in the fall of 2223. So the board provided some criterion uh, that we used uh, in the committee to look at the different areas and to identify and use these as guidelines in creating uh, the boundary process or the, the, the new boundaries that we, that we currently have. Um, these are not in any order and none of them carry more weight than the other. And actually some of them actually conflict against each other. So it was the job of the, uh, the committee to look at that and weigh that and then decide how they wanted to proceed. So just quickly, uh, best provi uh, best, provide best learning opportunities, the best use of facilities, uh, minimize added expenses, uh, minimize disruptions, uh, consider school proximity, and then achieve uh, wide support uh, in the new uh, boundary process. So why are so many schools being affected um, in really around the city when the new school is gonna be built in the southeast? Um, and that's a question that we've been getting in the office quite a bit. Uh, and the reason for that is as we looked at creating the new boundaries for Del Oro, we also realized that there are other parts of the city that were also um, severely over capacity. Lots more kids than they currently can hold. Um, and those schools are Highland and Ridgeview. Um, and so had we not addressed that during this committee, um, then what would have happened is we would have made the boundary for Del Oro and then probably two or three years from now, we would have to have another boundary change uh, that would have affected these schools. And the problem is neither of these schools are close to each other. So we probably would have had to have two different boundary committees to even address that, which would have meant even more changes down the line. And we didn't want to do that. 
Uh, in addition to that, um, there was uh, there is no bond money available um, for another school to be built, um, for probably for at least another eight to ten years. Uh, the earliest that the the board would even approve a bond is probably the year 2024, uh, and then it takes anywhere from four to six years before an actual school would be finalized, finding the property, and building the actual school. So it's a lengthy process, um, and so if we didn't address it now, uh, we would have some severe overcapacity issues at many of our schools for the next, almost the next decade. So the uh, committee process, I'm going to explain a little bit about how that was initiated. Um, the board had the option of creating and changing boundaries on their own if they wanted to. Um, they didn't want to do that. So they asked us to create a boundary committee that would then look at the different areas, really dive into the, the details of the different um, the, the numbers, the projected numbers, so that we could um, then provide a, a good analysis uh, in the committee as far as what the changes would be. Uh, the members were recommended by uh, the principals in the Kern High School District. Uh, so they were selected by them and they were invited to participate. We actually had more folks on the committee originally, um, but because of COVID, um, several of them bowed out because they did not want to be in an enclosed environment. Um, and so that caused some of the numbers to come down. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, we did meet since early April for a couple months, uh, looked at lots of plans, uh, and divided the city basically into four quadrants. We started with the southwest, or the southeast, where De Oro is. Uh, we created their boundary, and then each area after that, we kind of combined them all to create the three plans that you have uh, before you. We did look at capacity numbers, at targeted numbers, um, throughout each of the schools. Um, and the committee voted on each of those proposed map areas. Now, some folks have been emailing me asking me for those exact numbers. And, and the problem is that without context of those numbers, uh, it's, not, it's just going to confuse you more than help you. And so this has been a very transparent process. It's been done through a committee. And the committee are the ones that represent the community. And so they were given all of that information in, lots of detail to make um, the proper decision for them. So it's not that we don't want to give out those numbers, it's just that those numbers, without some context behind them, is going to really confuse folks as to why the change has happened. So um, in the previous um, forum, somebody asked one of the questions was about why were there 50 members in one committee and, and, and now we only have you know, 14 in this committee. Um, well, it, we've had actually four boundary changes since 2006, including this one. Uh, that first boundary change that they were referring to had about 45 members in it. Uh, but if you recall, uh, or here in Bakersfield, that was when we opened two schools, uh, Miramonte and Independence. So that necessitated having these two committees, or the, 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 basically the, the one committee divided into two, looking at the different areas. In 2011, uh, we had another committee, and there was 12 people on it. In 2017, we had a committee, there was 12. And in this last um, committee, even though I said we started with more, we ended up having uh, 14 folks who came on a regular basis. And I think a lot of that was because of just being on the heels of COVID and all the things that had to happen because of that. So uh, just to give you a few numbers so you can uh, kind of understand why we had to build that school in the southeast. Um, these are the schools that kind of surround Del Oro. You can see Arvin, Golden Valley, South, and Miramonte are exceedingly over their, their capacity limits. Um, the other schools, uh, as we looked at that, in order to address the Highland issue and the Ridgeview issue, um, we had to then involve a lot more areas, a lot more schools, in order to um, be able to kind of balance the enrollment number over time. And so that's where you see some of these changes happening uh, throughout the city that normally would have just happened in the Del Oro area uh, in the southeast, but because we also addressed some other capacity issues throughout uh, the city, it necessitated us being able to, uh, to look at um, other areas as well. So what grades are being moved? Um, there's been some confusion about that, so I'm gonna, hopefully I can clarify that tonight. Um, if you are a ninth and 10th grader and live in the new Del Oro boundary, 
which are the, are the schools you see there, Arvin, Golden Valley, South, and Miramonte, then you would be moving um, ninth and 10th grade starting in the year 22, okay? If you are in one of the other schools that were affected by the changes, uh, that would only affect incoming ninth graders. So if you're already there at that school, it has no impact on you having to move. Uh, it'll be only incoming ninth graders, so basically next year's eighth graders as they become ninth graders would be the ones that would be moving on those schools alone. Um, additionally, we do have a, a policy uh, in the high school district not to split families up. So if you already have an existing sibling who's already at that school, uh, they can remain at that school or they can go to the new school. It's, it's kind of up to them. Um, and if that, that student does have an older sibling, normally when they come for registration, uh, they can fill out what's called a family IDT, uh, and that allows them then to stay at that school um, for the rest of their, their high school career. There are no uh, athletics restrictions because of moving of these boundaries, so it doesn't affect any of the athletics. Um, and we do have transportation provided for the walk-in areas, which is about a two-mile radius uh, from the schools. Uh, and that will go into effect um, the same way as it always has. Um, we are asked, uh, we are creating a busing analysis. Um, I've asked my transportation department, um, who are the experts in that field, to look at the three plans and to come up with some uh, scenarios as to how each of the busing, um, how each of the plans affect the busing over time. And so I hope to have that ready for the board uh, at their August meeting uh, so they can review that information. So um, one question I've been getting a lot um, in my emails is, you know, my school has tradition, my family went there, why can't I attend the same school? Um, we certainly do not want to do this right now. I mean, it's, like I said, this necessitated because of the Del Oro uh, being built. Um, but we are moving 14 schools uh, are, are going to be changing parts of their boundaries as we try to balance this out. So it's, it's quite a significant change throughout the entire city. Uh, there's 18 comprehensive schools in the current high school district. Uh, nine of those schools have been in existence for over 50 years. So every school in the district has some established traditions and created a culture of success for their students. So I just wanted to make clear that we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, even though we think that some of the newer schools have been here just for a few years, um, especially the ones on the west side, a lot of those are approaching 30 years, 40 years, and as I mentioned, there's nine that have over 50 years that have been in the district. Open enrollment is something that happens every um, January, and that's for students who don't necessarily want to go to the school that they're assigned to uh, or, or their parents live. Uh, I bring this up because there's some interesting stats about how many students apply for open enrollment as freshmen and then how many students apply for open enrollment their ninth, 10th, and 11th year going on to their, to their next grade. Um, on average, we have about 500 students that apply for open enrollment as incoming ninth graders. Now understand that those, are, those 500 kids have never been on the campus. Uh, they have never taken a class on that campus. They haven't met a teacher. Um, maybe don't even know many people on the campus. Um, so that first year is always, in a way, traumatic for any freshman, uh, whether you're attending the same school or not, because many times your, your friends are going to different schools because of the feeder school boundaries and how those have an impact. But what's interesting is after you become a, a ninth grader, so a ninth grader, 10th grader, and 11th graders, about 30,000 of our students, um, we only have about 50 kids that apply uh, for open enrollment. And so that tells you that once a student has kind of built some tradition and some history and some, some roots in that school, uh, they don't normally want to leave that school. They've built new friends, they've been involved in sports, they've run the clubs, uh, and so they, they want to stay at the school that they're at, even though maybe originally they didn't want to go to that school um, because, they had a, because of a boundary change. So um, these maps, um, you can see them all on, the, uh, on our webpage, so they're available. Um, if, you, you, if you picked one up on the way in, it shows the boundary changes, but we have three of the maps that are available on our webpage. So uh, the new boundaries, it actually just shows you a clean version of it. Uh, the boundary changes shows you a map that has kind of these dashes that I'll show you here in a second. And then we also have a, a web map that allows you to zoom in and kind of really target what area you're going to look at. 
So this would be uh, typical of, of just a regular boundary, the new boundary that would happen. If you can see the area in red, that is uh, the new boundary for De Oro. In this map, you can't quite tell what areas have been changed compared to what we have now. Um, so we've created the second map that has the boundary transition areas. So all those areas that are, have slashes are originally going to one school, and now they're being moved. So if you look again at the De Oro, that brown area on the north side used to be belong to, Nor to, to Miramonte. Now that would be part of De Oro. The area in the pink we used to belong to Arvin. It's De Oro. The yellow is Golden Valley, and would go to De Oro. And then the blue in the middle used to belong to South. So even this map is a little difficult to tell exactly what streets are being moved. Um, so in order to alleviate that, we also created um, a web map. And this allows you to put your address uh, in the corner, and it'll actually zoom in to the area where um, that particular address belongs to. So for example, if we zoomed in onto South High, uh, this is what would come up. And this is similar to like a Google map, so you can actually zoom in, you can move it around, and really identify what streets are involved in the change. And then the other thing that's nice about this map, it also tells you in the bottom corner here um, what's the plan, um, what school is being moved, and then what grades are also being moved. So if there's confusion, that allows you to, uh, to be able to see that. So I will close my portion with two final maps. Uh, this map displays our current high school boundaries. Uh, you can see the colors, the boundary lines that separate each school. Naturally, most people will focus on their home and where their child will attend. We understand the passion and emotions and traditions generated for where you live and what school you want your kids to attend. The Kern High School District is a very large uh, district. On this map, each of these dots represents over 41,000 high school students who live across the entire area. What you don't see are colors or boundaries or any separation of the high schools. All these students was the focus of the committee and of the current high school district. Please keep in mind that at the end of the day, the reason that greater Bakersfield area is such a wonderful place to live and go to school is that we're all one community.